everyone. Welcome to Tech Tuesday. I'm James Lewis here with Mr. Michael Pruitt and some others to talk to you about some new tech coming to the UNCP campus called Frame. I think that's what it's called, right, Mike? Correct. That's right. So, all right, we're going to turn it over to Mike. Go ahead and get it started. If you have any questions, just let us know. Uh, either open your mic or put something in the chat message for us. All right, here you go, Mike. All right, hi. So, Frame is um, replacing what we've had on campus, um, VMware View or VMware Horizon View. Basically, it is a virtual desktop that you can access to get access to local resources on campus from anywhere. So, for example, if you are a student offsite, this is the way you can get access to, to the full-blown version of Microsoft Office or SPSS without having to install anything on your computer. It would also give you access to, say, for example, the contents on your iDrive or on the J Drive, or if you're a faculty and staff member, the K Drive. Um, the official go live date for this is going to be October 20th, and there will be an official communication going out before then. However, in the meantime, it is up and available if anyone is interested in using it or just wants to hop on and play around with it. We also already have some documentation on it up on the Do It website, so which is what I have up here right now. And this actually walks through a lot of things I'm going to be going over while showing this off. So accessing it's pretty straightforward. You're going to be using your web browser. The best user experience is going to be if you're using Chrome or Edge. However, um, the one exception that would be if you're on an iPad, you'll want to use Safari instead. It will function in Safari on a Mac, and it will function in Firefox and a number of other browsers. But anything that's based off of the Google Chrome project, which includes Edge, is going to have the best user experience. Getting access is pretty straightforward. You're just going to go to frame.uncp.edu, which I'm going to do now via the link that's actually in our documentation. Now, most campus users are going to go straight to a virtual desktop. Because I have an admin account, I instead get a list of all the stuff from the admin console side. So give me one second, and I will pop over to what you will more than likely see when you first hop on. You will be presented with a launch pad for a desktop. It will be one of the ones that's available to you, which if you are a faculty, staff, or student, that's going to include the remote lab desktop. This gives you a desktop environment that's very similar to what we have in the computer labs on campus. However, faculty and staff are also going to have access to a handful of others, which you can access through this little dropper up top here, which I have access to more than most are going to have because of all of the development side of it. But for example, faculty and staff are going to have access to the fact staff desktop as well. But for demo purposes, we're going to stick to the remote lab since that's the one that everyone on campus is going to have access to. Now to log in, once you're presented with a screen, you go to the desktop account that you want, and you just click on desktop here. That will initiate your session. And what it's doing in the background is checking for an available computer, saying hi to it, and connecting you in like this. You would then just log in with your AD account. So in my case, let's hope that I remember my password since I last changed it, and sign in. Now, along the bottom here, you can see a handful of other things that give you some information about your session. Over here in the bottom left corner, we have how good our current connection to the desktop is. So right now, I have five out of five dots, so it's kind of like the equivalent of having full bars on your cell phone to do. Which is growing out since it's connected me in now. But besides that, you have a latency meter. So this shows how much latency is between the desktop. That's being measured in milliseconds, so that's really, really tiny. You also have an option to control what the scaling on the screen is. You're probably going to leave that at 100%. This also tells you, tells you your current session time, so how long you've been in and 
how long it can be. And then there are a handful of other icons on the other corner that we'll go over in just a second. But as you can see now, I have what looks very similar to what would be the desktop, uh, the desktop screen in any of our computer labs. You have access to a lot of the same software. Um, we try to make sure that all the icons for what's installed are going to be on the desktop, just like we do in the labs. And it functions a lot like any other computer, basically. So, for example, if I wanted to launch Microsoft Word, we double click on it. And we've got Microsoft Word. And since it's integrated with UNCP single sign on, notice it even already knows who I am over here in the corner here. Now, one thing that's also worth noting is that just like the computer lab on campus, you do not want to save anything to the local machine here. These machines get wiped every time a user logs out. So you do not want to save anything to the desktop, the documents, or the C drive of the local machine here. But that would be why we have access to a handful of things. For one, you have your I drive and your K drive, just like you would on campus. So just like if you were in a computer lab, that's one of the, these would be the places that we would recommend you save. However, Frame also supports integrating with your Google Drive and your OneDrive, which that's what these two icons here in the bottom right corner are. Now, by default, they are not going to be set up for your account. All you need to do, though, is click on it, give Frame permission to have access to either your Google Drive or OneDrive, depending on what you're doing, and then they will show up here um, just like they would and basically just like your iDrive, more or less. And saving them to them works just like it normally would as well. In fact, typically I save most of my work on campus to my to my OneDrive since that's what most of what um do it internally can use the most. But either one works perfectly fine. Let's see. A couple of other things worth noting usage wise. You can upload files either by dragging and dropping them onto the window or by hitting this little cloud upload button. That will give you a prompt to upload a file from your local workstation. And what that will do is drop any files you send here over to the uploads folder. Likewise, if you want to save anything from the frame desktop you're using to the computer you're connecting from, if you drop it in the download now folder here, it will automatically prompt and download onto your local machine. Let's see. Another thing worth noting is that if you print while you are in frame, what will instead happen is you will get a prompt to print from any printer available to your local computer. So, for example, I realize it's blank, but here we can either print to the Weeper printer since that is configured on our remote lab machine, or we can print to the frame printer, which will generate let you print to anything the device you're connecting on has access to. So for example, say you're trying to print at home and you're connecting your home computer. If you print to the frame printer, that will give you the option to print a PDF to your local computer. There are a couple of advanced options you can do while you're in here as well that are worth noting. If you need to, if you need to at some point hit Control Delete for whatever reason, you would click on this gear icon to be able to do that. This is also where you can change the resolution in deeper settings. However, in general, the defaults here are what you want to stick with. They're what um, are going to give you the best performance the majority of the time. And so I wouldn't recommend playing with them unless you're seeing any kind of connectivity issues. Like say, for example, if you're connecting from home on an extremely slow connection, you might want to lower the max frames per second or, vi or video rate. But I would imagine in general, that would not be necessary for most folks. Another thing worth noting is that you can copy and paste from your local computer to this computer and back. However, every now and then, since it's going through a browser, it can get a little confused, which is what this sync clipboard button is for. 
if you click on it, it's going to give you the, op the option to synchronize automatically with your current clipboard. So it'll take what's in your clipboard on your machine and send it to, the, to frame or take what's in frame and send it to your current computer. Let's see. Let's see more thing. Um, I don't really like the news. Um, also worth noting is by default, sound is off when you connect. However, if you do need sound for any reason, you just click the sound icon here and that will automatically turn it on. Likewise, if you want to have the windows in a full in full screen, so taking over your entire desktop, you would use this last button here to kick it into full screen. Let's see. The other thing worth another thing worth noting is that by default, if you are idle for 20 minutes, it will knock you off so that you're not taking up resources another another user on canvas could be. However, if your connection hiccups, say for example, um, your internet goes down for say five minutes while you're at home. If you can reconnect within those five minutes, your session will still be held in place for you. When you're done, you have multiple options. You could um, log out through Windows like normal. However, the recommended practice would be to click the gear here and hit close session. What this will do is prompt you to close out of what you're doing and takes you back to the launch pad. And what that's doing in the background is taking the computer you were connected to and basically wiping it real quick so that the next person that gets it has none of your stuff on there. And that was a very quick overview, but I actually feel like it's in general pretty straightforward to use. Do we have any questions though? Hey Mike, is this would this be good for those who need to use a like Photoshop or a certain piece of software in a certain lab to use this type of setup for that or what? Some things yes, some things no. Photoshop, as an example, um, unfortunately, um, licensing wise, isn't something we can include on here. Okay. But let's go back into the desktop here. Um, for example, SPSS and SAS are both fairly expensive products to purchase even under an academic license that are made available to students here. This is also a good way to get access to the full-blown version of Office on say a Chromebook or an iPad, where instead you'd be limited to the browser-based version or the mobile version.